Hi there, Stuart Howe here, and I'm talking on the BWTM Sport Channel. For the first time uh, over, for five, over five years, it's, uh, we're going to re uh, reverse the roles. So I'm now interviewing Ingram Jones, which is uh, different. So welcome to the show, Thank Ingram you very Jones. Much. It's nice to have be on the show. So, Ing this is the Ingram from BW... Uh, sorry, uh, BWTM. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, BWTM. So, what happened yesterday is I obviously saw you coach cricket and uh, just shadowing. I was just I wasn't getting involved shadowing cricket, which was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've got a few questions if that's alright with you. Go ahead. So uh, obviously loving the way you were coaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. And first, I'm just going to talk about technique. Yes. And then later in the show, I'm going to obviously talk about NLP. Yes. Um, with coaching. Yep. But I, I want to just focus on something technique, which I found very interesting. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, so. What happened? What I noticed was on the when you was teaching the batsman yes. is um, that the child couldn't, you know, the, the cricketer wasn't getting it at all. You know, he was just swinging, hitting it up in the air, yeah. missing it, and yeah. you know, it was almost like a, a like a car crash waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and the beauty of it was what I noticed from an outside point of view. Mm -hmm. The first thing I and bearing in mind, and this is why I'm putting this across, is because I'm not a cricket involved. Mm -hmm. From an outsider, I was like, he just needs to hold the bat differently. And you come from a different angle completely, mm -hmm. where you were talking about footwork. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting part for me is why, when it's you're hitting the bat, why was you going straight for something that an outsider wouldn't see? Mm. What? How do you see these things? What? What made it? Well, you know, as you know, you know, I love boxing as well. Yeah, of course. So I see the correlation between boxing and cricket is very similar. People think, how's that? It's because everything's based on the footwork. No matter how good a punch you can throw, if you haven't got good balance and you haven't got good footwork, you've got to have footwork to get in, to get out, to get in, throw shots, to get out, move to the sides. When you're in trouble, be able to get away from punches, you know, get into get into position to throw the right shots, to set a fighter up. All these things are important. As for a cricketer, you need to know when to come forward, when to go back. Okay, when am I going to get on the front foot and play a drive? When am I going to get on the back foot and play, decide to pull a ball? When am I going to decide to leave a ball alone? As for boxing. When am I going to engage? When is it not right for me to engage? So, for me, footwork is foundation. So, I always use the analogy to a young person. If you're building a house, you ensure you build it on solid ground. Yeah. If you build it on sand, when the trouble comes, water comes in, your whole house falls down. So you can have the biggest punches in the world. You can have the, big, the best shots around, but if your foundation isn't correct, when it's put under pressure, it all falls apart. Okay, thank, thank you. It's uh, what I noticed as well. Like after you taught the lad mm -hmm. the footwork, yeah. then it started coming together. Yes. And you kept saying about the the, the overarm, yeah. you know, hitting down, making sure that the ball's not going up in the air. Yeah. Which again, technique. And an interesting thing that I was, what I got out of it mm -hmm. from yesterday was. After repetition, they started enjoying it, mm -hmm. you know, because they weren't out all the time. Yep. So they, they were in, and it was consistency. Mm -hmm. Now, what I noticed once the consistency consistency was there, and mm -hmm. they were enjoying it again, and they yes. were really enjoying it, mm -hmm. and they got your mindset on the thing. Yep. Afterwards, when you played the game, mm -hmm. you let them have what I call like the free roll, yes. and, and that time, all right, they were still doing what you were doing, yes. what you taught them. But mm -hmm. after that, they were smashing the ball and making different shots, mm -hmm. how comes you let them start, because at the first you're going, look, stop the, stop the big shots, mm -hmm. stop the big shots, mm -hmm. let's learn the basics. Mm -hmm. They got that right, mm -hmm. why did you let them then, let them start doing the old, the, be the big shots? Because I'm, because I'm, I'm conscious, either if it be a boxer, a cricketer, a tennis player, a footballer, you've got to ensure that practice is in preparation for matches, okay? You must always remember, the practice it's what's going to get you better. The yeah. matches is where you perform. You've got to ensure that player is able to perform on match day. You've heard so many times players cannot perform in the big matches, yeah. but they can perform in the gym. They can perform on the training ground. Oh, he can put the ball in the back of net all the time. Come the train, come the match, can't do it. Oh, in training he's done great in sparring. Come the big fight, can't do it. Yeah. So I am very conscious that yes, you have to do certain things to improve your technique. But at the same time, I need to see you can do that under pressure. So I give you a technique. I say, this is what I need to do. Follow the instruction. While I'm telling them to follow the instruction, they're going to struggle with that. Because I'm, sometimes I'm taking away something that they, they, they would naturally do. Yeah. An incorrect pattern, incorrect technique, 
or uh, something not, not quite right so it's not doing something good in the future or for for a part of time so I need consistency that I'm doing something right over and over and over again but the time when I'm saying this to them they're convinced in their mindset they're doing the right thing mm. they are still looking in the eyes and say, I'm doing the right thing I'm saying look son you know you're not quite doing the right thing and then I have to sell them a different vision other than their own and these people can do this over and over and over again so it's a repetitive pattern in the mind so I have to unfold that put in a new pattern seed but at the same time gonna make it enjoyable for them so okay I'm taking this away from the moment but I'm also gonna reward you something as well so then when they've got that pattern right then I give them back that feel-good factor so they feel as if look I've done this I've moved away from what I was given I'm doing this new pattern now and I've got that feel-good factor afterwards so I haven't really missed out in fact I've gained I did notice that that when you first said look I don't want you don't care about the runs yeah because I was trying to smash it and yeah. getting caught out yeah. and hitting the wicket yeah. and then the, the consistency came mm -hmm. after about four shots you could see like probably three shots I'm like oh, I'm not getting anywhere but then they were consistent you saw the enjoyment come yeah. back yeah now the interesting thing that I've got to ask you yes. is because you're talking about the mindset yeah, and yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. Master practitioner, MLP, yes, yes. hypnotherapist, it's got me going. Harley Street. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, what happens is you're talking about, and I agree with what you're saying, like the mindset. Yes. And you're saying on, on the film, visualization, make yes. sure you know what you're going to do before you do it. Yes. When it comes to the match, yes. who's then making the decisions for them? So, the reason I ask that, mm. is I'm not trying to catch you out, this no, is no, an no, interesting no, no. one, is they, when do they know when to go for the smash for, for six runs or when to play it safe. Who's making that decision then when, say for example, during the game? What I do as a coach is I prepare them for that game. I prepare them for the, like in boxing, many boxers will talk about, I, I know many boxers who have dreamt or they visualise this, this, this shadow figure who, is, who hits harder than them who's faster than them, who's stronger than them, better than them in every single department. Well, I give that player, that cricketer, that same scenario, that they are facing the best they probably possibly can face. So when they get out on that field, they've done, they've had the most weight put on them. Yeah. So when they get out on the field, they're ready to go. They'll face anything. They're ready, they want to prove the point because they're so charged up from the practice they're ready to go. Okay. And they'll, 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 they'll do things that they don't expect themselves to do because, for example, that blinding catch they'll take or that 100 they'll take or that 100 they'll score. They, they'll feel it. They'll, they'll want to do it. But until they've actually done it, they're like, they've still got those doubts. For me, it's when they get out there and they see that ball, they can go, bang, this is the shot I played to this ball. This is the shot I played to that ball. And then if they, when they get dismissed, or it doesn't work out quite right, we go back to the net and we'll say, okay, this is, what we, this is what happened here. You did this very well. This is what you need to work on. But I've noticed in over the 20 years of coaching that there's a part where the player's struggling and then there's that breakthrough moment. Yeah. The breakthrough moment. It's the aha moment. When they get the aha moment, I hold them to that aha moment. So it's like a, it's like a, not feeling great, not feeling great, not feeling great, and then boom, the aha moment. Got the aha moment. I say, right, see that aha moment? I want you keeping that aha moment. In the good times and in the bad times. Okay. The aha moment. Because remember when you had the bad time? Here's the aha moment. Let's focus on that aha moment. What did it feel like when you hit that ball? What did it feel like when you caught that, took that catch? This is very interesting because that's an NLP technique. Is it? Uh, it is, but it's something called anchoring uh, like an emotion. So ah. what I use with boxers, funny enough. Right, so okay. We had that aha moment yes. um, where we anchor it in a, in, a, in a circle, so to speak, and they take it to the pitch or, or the arena with yes. them. So they're always in that aha moment. Yes. So they know that they're, they're, yep. they're best. And I find that even though we're teaching them the mindset, mm -hmm. you also give them, the, obviously it does look like from an outside point of view that you're making all their decisions. Yes. But when it comes to the arena or the yes. matches, yes. they're kind of making their own decision but based on the experience from our decisions, if that they, makes sense. They are count, the players are accountable for their actions. Yeah. Ultimately they are accountable. Every time they go in the net, I say to them, listen, this is your game. These are the rewards 
if you do the right things. These are the consequences if you spend all your time talking in the net. Yeah. If you spend all your time, you know, taking sh photographs of your body, your be body beautiful, instead of putting the work in, in the gym. Yeah. Do you know, what you put in is what you're going to get out. Yeah. So I stole that in the, in the player system into their minds from the very start. Okay. And obviously you love boxing, you love cricket. Mm -hmm. So, and with the boxing and the cricket, so I'm talking batsman, uh, yeah. or the, just when you're in bat only. Uh -huh. So you've got like the, I know there's two bats, but you've got the, the singular moment he's getting yeah. bowled at. Yeah. At that moment there where the, the, the pressure's on. Yeah. And then you've got the boxer that goes into the fight. Uh -huh. What would you say the similarities are? Television. In Television. You're still looking at something red that's coming at you. With the cricket, it's the one ball. With the boxer, it's the two fists. But it's the same thing. You're still keeping your eye on the situation. You're keeping your eye at all times. And you already, you, you get eye reaction, hand eye coordination for everything. So your decisions are based on your knowledge. Okay. Based on your knowledge. So I know if this, if, if this punch comes here, I can sway, I can duck, I can dive, I can slip, I can counter. So if a ball's short, or if I know a ball's coming to a guy's a player's chest, batsman's trying to intimidate him, I told you, this is what you do. That's how you take this on, so you'll play the ball. If the balls are short outside the stumps, we know we can cut. The player's prepared for every possible scenario that's there. So, would you say then, because obviously boxing, you are saying there's similarities there between boxing Absolutely. and cricket, where Absolutely. no when to defend, no when to attack, attack. I, yeah. get, I get that, yeah, and yeah. the footwork when yeah. you're training. Now, if we take a, a, a team sport, yeah. and I know cricket is a team sport, but yes. when you're batting, predominantly you're, on, you're singular, yeah. but if you take a, a footballer, a basketball player, would uh -huh. you say there is similarities there, or do you think cricket and boxing are very, very still, different still, on the mindset? Still, still, still similar, isn't it? Like football, foot, foot, footwork, when to, when to pass the ball, when to run, when to, uh, to run, you know, when to intercept, when not to intercept, when to make a good tackle. If you don't make a good tackle, what happens? You can get sort of, you get a red card. Okay. There are similarities. Tennis, when, how to play the shot, when to hit the ball hard, when to stop on the shot. Decisions, okay. hand-eye coordination. Okay. Here's my next question. Okay. Go ahead. Because I'm leading to this, which, because uh, you, I don't know whether you knew you were doing it or didn't know you were doing it, but right. with your coaching, I said you were using a lot of NLP in yes. your coaching. The way you're showing them, yes. the way you're getting them to visualise. Yes. Now, I appreciate you know your cricket. Yes. And I appreciate you know a lot about cricket. Yes. Now, I don't. I'm an outsider. Okay. However, the reason I'm asking this is if I took you to, for example, uh, a badminton player yes. who's struggling on confidence, yes. but knows the skill, so to speak, yes. but you knew the basics of badminton, so yes. you had a few days to look at the, yeah. the basics, yeah, yeah. would you be able to coach that badminton player? into a, I'm not saying like an elite, but yeah. would you be able to make that badminton player a better player? I think the coaching, I think the coaching philosophies are transferable, mm. not just in sport, but in life. To me, yeah. you need to know when to engage, when not to engage. You need to know, it's positive, you're being positive, but you need to know why you're being positive. Yeah. And if you're not doing, if you're not being successful as you, you should be, why are you not being successful? Um, I, are expectations too high? For a skill level you've got, okay, well, okay, I want to be an international player. But look, mate, you're not putting the work in. I want to be an international player. Yeah. But your skill set's not great. I want to be an international player. But I'm playing at a club that's not really benefiting the skill set I have. So there's lots of things to look at. That badminton player, I'm going to ask that question. Video analysis. Let's look at your play. Yeah. Let's look at how you're playing. Let's see how, what's your, what's your makeup, what's your build-up before you go, your mental setup before you go and play the game. You know, okay. um, so those are the things I look at his mental setup, and what is he saying to himself, or what is she saying to themselves? What is, what are the, do they have any um, repeated patterns? So I've been listening to the conversation saying, okay, when I go and play in a match, I, you know, I, either they might be superstitious, or they may, you know, they may have a situation where they uh, are nervous about certain things. Maybe we can look at those things and look to see if we can improve those things and take away those areas of fear and fill that with something of more positive note so they're using the fear to uh, inspire them rather than the fear to paralyse them. Okay, um, my last question, um, mm -hmm. which is because we're going down this road now and it's very interesting. Yes. So, and I know you know your cricket and it was, yeah. honestly, it was great to watch him mm -hmm. coach cricket because I learned a lot from the cricket myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I was like, oh, I know how to hold a bat now. I, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I know how to do the footwork now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know how to, to, to stand now because yeah. I made that mistake of being correct. So it's upright. Yeah. So I get that. So. What I'm going to ask you is, if you take a coach like yourself, uh -huh. 
Um, and I'm going to pick on the badminton player again. Right. So we, we, we use this badminton player, we uh -huh. get the top hypnotherapist there, yep. we get a top nutritionist with that badminton player, uh -huh. and we also get a top physio. Now, mm. physio that is, um, he's worked with, say, for example, the best boxers in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've worked with the best, say, cricketers in the world. Yeah. I've worked with the best boxers in the world, say. Uh -huh. So we all go to this badminton player, bearing in mind we don't know badminton. Uh -huh. Do you feel, with our expertise and experience with the, the, the level we've worked at, mm -hmm. helping this player, do you think we could make that badminton player into a great player? And bearing in mind that you know coaching, I know mindset, the nutritionist knows all about nutrition, yep. and the physio knows all about the muscles and, and movement. Well, I think you know, you're know you talking about excellence all round. So when a player is pretty average or doing average things and you've got excellence around him, the iron sharpens iron, doesn't it? Yep. So it, there's no doubt that that excellence is going to rub off on that player. So the, the player may have a decent skill set, but with a nutritionist there, as long as the, but it's down to the player responsibility and be accountable for the actions, they have to understand and see, I see value yeah. in everybody that's around me. Yeah. So for all these people to be around me, I've got to be a pretty good player. Yeah. But the player has to understand it themselves. So I need to understand if that player values themselves first and foremost, and does the, value, does the player value the input of these professionals around them? Because ultimately, if he doesn't value what I have to say, what you have to say, or what anyone else has got to say, and he only values himself, that could, or herself, that could be ultimately their downfall. Don't know what we say. The player has to be soaking up like a sponge, and if they're not, then we are wasting our time. Thank you for today, Ingram. It's nice to get obviously Ingram from uh, BWTM on the other side because um, mm -hmm. obviously um, you usually interview <laughs> us yeah. guys. Yeah, so yeah. thank you for the opportunity of reversing the roles. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. And uh, to all the viewers, I would love to know what you think. Um, I enjoyed it today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Man. Thank thank you. you. Keep watching BWTM Sports. We're out of here. Take care.